Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Money Matters Top Tips for Success, where each and every day I bring on new business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and have them share their top tips for success with you. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, moneymatterstoptips.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Minnie Ingersoll online, and she's a partner over at 10110, and she's host of the LA Venture Podcast. Uh, Minnie, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on, Adam. So I'm excited to get more into what you're doing over at 10110, and I always love to uh, promote other podcasters that are doing great work, so we're definitely going to get into LA Venture Podcast, so my my audience can also uh, get in over there and what you're teaching. But before we do that, let's get into your background a little bit. So how did you get started uh, in your career? Uh, Sure. So I I grew up in LA and uh, then was uh, sort of on the nerdier side of things and uh, went to Stanford and made computer science. And that really kind of launched me into the entrepreneurship tech um, dot-com boom of things. This is in the mid-'90s. And um, I, after, after studying computer science, I got into product management and was at a company that IPO'd in March of 2000, so right before everything burst. Um, And then I was lucky enough to get hooked up with Google um, and joined Google in 2002 and spent, um, it was kind of crazy, but I spent a third of my life there. So when I I left, I was uh, 36 and I've been there almost 12 years. Wow, that's awesome. A third of your life at Google. Not a bad place to learn and grow and, and to cultivate your skills. Um, I love it. Um, let's, uh, let's switch up a bit, Minnie. I want to get into what you're doing over at 10110. So first, talk a little bit more about the company, please. Sure. So 10 on 10 is an early stage venture fund based here in LA. So um, the thing, so I, so I stayed at Google for, as I said, over a decade, and then I started my own company. So I, I then became an entrepreneur, which is sort of a crazy transition to make. And I spent five years building my own company and then just recently moved over to 10 on 10 um, about a year ago, where we're doing a lot of the things that I did and saw while I was building my own company and, uh, you know, seeing sort of the crazy growth times, not just at Google, but in all of Silicon Valley. So um, just to be kind of specific about 10110, so we invest in the seed round usually, um, which is usually someone who's raising, say, $2 million, um, and they, you know, they've got some products built. They have customers usually um, but, you know, what they've done before meeting 10 is they've been, you know, raising friends and family money and, and getting things going. And we're able to come in and really help them get to the next level. And it's, um, you know, I think it's an incredibly fulfilling job and it's um, sort of an exciting place to be right now. It's amazing. And um, what type of uh, companies, any, any specific niches that you look after or you go after? Um, well, we, my background is in software. I have two partners who are both. Mm-hmm on the nerdier side of um of things and I love so I love how you say that by the way. I'm like in my mind I'm like, oh I wish I was I wish I had that too. I don't I don't have it. I just got the, I got the, I can talk, but I'm like, man, I wish I was on the nerdier side of things. Continue. I'm sorry. I just love the way you say it. <laughs> no, you know, I appreciate that, but you know, when I was in high school I didn't appreciate it as much, I think. Um but the, I was always on the nerdier side of things whether I wanted to be or not. But um yeah, so, I mean, all of us having started, all of us have started, we've been founders of companies, have been mm-hmm. software and data-related companies, and so we tend to invest in that same sort of thing, which is software and data companies. We sometimes say that our sweet spot is engineers turned entrepreneurs, and especially mm-hmm. engineers turned entrepreneurs in L.A., which is this new, not new, L.A. is not new, but um, it's, a, it's mm-hmm. just a really booming ecosystem right now. Um, and so, you know, finding those people who we feel like, where we can add some value um, and, you know, businesses that we feel like we understand because we've been there ourselves. That's awesome. Any any kind of, um, and I, the whole Silicon Beach thing, I mean, it blows my mind. I'm five blocks away from the beach in Santa Monica right now, and um, just what's taking place. I've only been here eight years, so I'm, a, I'm one of those transplants that uh, – are over here, uh, whether, um, you know, clogging up the, the highways and freeways, but um, Silicon Beach and just the explosion that you're, you're talking about is just amazing to me. That being said, any kind of, tra- I mean, you're, you're looking at deal flow all the time. Any kind of interesting trends or technology that you're seeing out there that just excites you? 
Yeah, um, so there are different things. So um, so one thing is I'm not by the beach. I'm actually over in Pasadena. So I'm, um, I'm across the street from Caltech um, oh. and down the street from JPL. And, you know, I do think that different, even within L.A., which, as you know, it's a, a mm-hmm. trillion-dollar economy, and I think it's 10 million people in L.A. County. So it's huge, right? And and some people say that means that it's sort of lack center of gravity, but I actually think it means that there are multiple centers of gravity. Um, sure. And I think and I think that what's going on sort of more in my neighborhood in Pasadena um, mm-hmm. is really exciting around things like robotics. Computer vision is exploding. Um, mm. I personally, though, um, well, two things. So one, as a fund, we um, we think that there are some funds that we are friends with, some other venture capital funds that really take a thesis-driven approach to investing, um, and more power to them. They may be smarter than I am, but so what we like to do is really founder-led investing. So our, our sweet spot is probably where there's a founder who is deep in a major industry. They know the automotive space. They know the agriculture space. They know healthcare because they have been deep in it, and then they come to us mm-hmm. with um, an interesting technical solution to a problem that they have unique insight on. And, you know, you know, that's what all, you know, I think that's what most people say, but that is definitely, you know, we're not sitting at the whiteboard here and coming up with our own CDs. Um, so that's one part answer, uh, and I'll give you sort of my second part answer, which is things that I uh, keep about personally. Um, I really care about um, building things that are good in the world, and uh, I would, I guess it's easier for me to get passionate about the things that, um, w- where I care and things that I care about are things like uh, solutions to the bottom half of society rather than the top half of society. Um, and it turns out that, uh, that there's lots that can be done there. And so everything from looking at um, and looking at a credit repair company to looking at um, innovations in health. Um, and so it's not, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm an impact investor because I'm very much all about returns, but my experience at Google led me to very firmly believe that um, that asking over and over what's best for the user, what's best for society, is actually the way to build long-term value. Mm, that's awesome. And uh, I'll be up front. I like hearing you talk, so I want to transition into LA Venture Podcast. So uh, not only can the, my listeners know what's going on over there, but so I can know, too, because I'm adding the podcast. So uh, tell us more about the podcast and what we can expect when we listen to it. Absolutely. Well, thank you for asking. Yeah, I mean, podcast is so interesting. I am interviewing um, the VCs in LA. That is my focus. Um, And, you know, I started by very much saying that my audience was entrepreneurs and helping them get to know the VC before they go get someone. So my experience of raising money for my stuff, um, which I did for like five years, I felt like I was raising money, um, was I personally am sort of easily intimidated by people I don't know. And once I get to know them, they're, um, I'm not intimidated anymore. But intimidated might be the wrong word, but it's a level of comfort um, mm-hmm. that makes me feel like I'm better able to approach them and ask them for money when I sort of realize that they're a human and have some of their story. Mm-hmm. And so my idea was, let me make sure that I'm interviewing all the LADCs and entrepreneurs can use this as a resource um, to hear someone's back, background and hear what their investment thesis is, what they like to invest in. Um, and then over the course of doing, um, you know, a few dozen of these interviews, um, and now I have a lot more lined up, uh, but um, I really learned that, that I am my own target audience. And actually what I'm hoping to do is also wow. I just enjoyed learning from my guests. Oh, my gosh. What you just now said is so funny because you don't know until you know that. Like when I when we started this um, this podcast, the whole thought process was, um, so I, I knew my bandwidth, all right, so I always came from that financial services space. I was, you know, an advisor for a lot of years, so who are my audience? It's going to be a bunch of people like me. So when people, like, so a lot of people I interview and I talk to, I'm like, I'll talk to some of the financial advisors or something else, or, you know, all across the spectrum, and I'm like, who is, who's my target audience? I'm like, well, you are, so just talk like you were talking to you and we'll be okay. <laughs> but it's so interesting how that happens. And then the other interesting thing is, um, is as you start getting the feedback from your audience, audience, you find more of your tribe. Have you noticed that at all? I'm just curious on the podcasting side. Oh, absolutely. And people tell me what they find valuable. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, 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 and, you know, for me, it's, I ask questions like, 
I, I ask, this is very meta, but I ask questions to my guests. Well, what questions do you ask to entrepreneurs when they're going to come and pitch you? Because I think, oh, that would be, if I were an entrepreneur, I'd want to know that. But then yeah. in the course of that, I, very, I learned what questions I should be asking entrepreneurs, right? And, and I think, oh, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't thought about things that way. So, yeah, it, it, it's a, I, I found it an incredible um, and low barrier to entry to become a podcaster, and I've, it's been incredible for me. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. Um, huge advocate of podcasting. So, um, so many. Uh, if somebody's listening to this and they want more information on 10110, uh, or if they also, and I should say, they also want information on how to get the LA Venture podcast, and what's the best way for them to follow up and, and, and uh, start following you? Well, of course, they can subscribe to the LA Venture podcast where I try not to talk too much. Um, but, you know, I take LinkedIn requests. So I know some people don't, but. If I get a well-written LinkedIn request, as in, you know, when someone says, hey, look, I'm building the new direct-to-consumer CBD shampoo, I think it's perfect for you. And I don't apply to that because I do software investing with engineers turned entrepreneurs. Um, but when someone writes me a thoughtful note, says, I think you'd be interested in this, I always accept their request as fast as I, I mean, always is a strong word. But, you know, and then I actually share my email address. I mean, I share my email address here, which is mini at 10110.net, but... Um, being thoughtful in how you approach them. I'm like, I always want to be thoughtful then back in my response. Fantastic. And uh, so I really appreciate you coming on the show today, Minnie. And to everybody listening, go check out LA Venture Podcast, uh, especially if you're uh, an entrepreneur that's considering raising capital or just want to know more about the VC world. Um, uh, Minnie's been a lot of experience in it and a, a lot to teach and learn, and we're all learning. So it's going to be a, go a good listen for you. And uh, to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning into this podcast. Um, if this is your first time with us, definitely make sure you subscribe. Uh, leave us a comment. If you're listening to this on or watching this on the YouTube channel, um, leave us some comments. If you have some comments on VCs or other things that you want to hear, um, leave us some comments there. I'd love, love to engage with you. Um, and many thanks again for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Thanks, my Adam.